Good morning, viewers. Good morning, which Celtic fans. There is some a bit of worrying report this morning. Um, but before I get to the really bad news uh, about one a speculation about one of our players, and I think if we were to lose this player, it could be really bad news for Celtic because they would have to go out and spend some serious money to replace this guy. Um, and it's, it's somebody that's never been spoken about being in, up for transfer speculation yet. Talk about Scott Brown, we talk about Celtic being ranked number second stadium in the world. And I actually look at the Ticket Gum uh, blog and I was going to read exactly how they worked out that Ce Celtic were the second best stadium in the world. And then there's a bit uh, transfer speculation around about Kyogo again. Um, that, I think that's not going to go away. But Ro Brendan Rogers, first of all, has spoken about his admiration for Kyogo. He says that he's liking the Japanese, he likes the Japanese players style of play and he's said that he's similar to Luis Suarez as long as he doesn't go around bouting people it'll be fine Furashi scored 35 goals uh, however Rogers confirmed that um, he wants to try and keep him if he can he says uh, I've obviously signed a three-year deal and I want to work closely with Mark in terms of recruitment in coming weeks to strengthen the squad and he stressed that Furashi um, who's back in his homeland is a striker that will fit in perfectly with his style of play at Celtic and don't really look to sell him or Hatati, but we'll see what transpires with that. Let's get to the Celtic story about Celtic being the second best stadium in the world and how they got to this. And this will really uh, got to be in the bonnet of every other club in the UK because even they even beat Man United Stadium. So ticket, ticketgum.com um, done the survey and the way that they got the, the information and the data uh, they determined out of 140 football stadiums from across across the globe uh, they were to score them with a stadium index out of 100 and there were several factors that come into play when determining which football stadiums are the best in the world it came to seating capacity it says the average number of goals scored the average monthly attendance the Google reviews, the global search volume for each stadium. Now you can get that Google, you can get that easily that data from Google, and then the amount of attention they get on social media, i.e., TikTok and Instagram. So buckle up, <laughs> and then uh, this it's, 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 it's some read. I'll put the link to it. So there's obviously ones in North America, Europe, Asia, Africa, and South America. Um, so the top 10 football stadiums are, and I'll put the link to it and I'm, I'm not going to go through it all, but Celtic are second out of uh, a, an, an impressive, impressive stadiums when you, when you look around the world and you see them, Old Trafford is number seven and Wembley are third, uh, so Celtic Park has a seating capacity of 61,927, it has a Google rating of 4.7, the average goals per game is four. And the stadium index scored was 80.74, which is uh, there was only two teams that got over 80 within the, the scoring. So I will put a link to that so you can actually go and read it and see. Um, the home, it's, the, it's the home of the boys in green, ranking second place for the best football stadium in the world. And then it just goes on. Uh, but no, that's fantastic. It's great. It's, <laughs> it's another one to get in there, isn't it? Uh, Let's move on swiftly. We've spoke a bit about Scott Brown and the fact that he's doing fantastic down at his first job in management. And Whitaker, his number two, says everyone knows their roles within the organisation, within the team. He's had to think about that side of things and he's adapted really well, talking about Scott Brown. If you're fair with him and what he's doing and what he's asked, you can get the best out of you. He will 100% be there for you. It's the, the standards he's set and expects from his teammates throughout the years is exactly the same as he is as a manager. Brown has instigated mid-season changes that sparked a successful second half of the season. Um, it's good to see Scott down there and doing well and learning his trade as a manager. And I'm glad that he didn't come back to Celtic as a number two. I'm glad that he is down there doing his own thing. Right to this really bit of concerning news this morning. Um, and as Post Coglu, it's, it's been suggested that uh, Tottenham want to re-sign a player that has sold to Celtic for six million. I'm just hoping that there isn't one of those stupid buyback clauses for a ridiculous low amount of money. Um, I'm pretty concerned about this one. This it could all be speculation, but um, 
It is coming out of London, this one, so uh, Apostle Coglu is, is now being linked with Celtic defender Carter Vickers. It is coming out, it's, I don't know, it could just be speculation. It could all be speculation. I hope it's speculation and I hope it doesn't come back for him because if Celtic were to lose Carter Vickers, they would have to go out and spend some serious money. And I think the partnership, I think we need to, he is one player that we really cannot sell this summer, and especially going into the Champions League. It's our view that he went on to say it's not a bad idea for Tottenham to give Carter Vickers a second chance. Uh, the, the USA International has been superb at Celtic and a key player for them for the Glasgow Giants. This says uh, 25 year old centre back has won the Scottish Premiership twice. Um, he was at Tottenham from 2009 to 2022 and he basically he never made a single appearance for them. Well, as Postal Coglu come back in for him, I hope he doesn't. Um, I hope he doesn't. There was other breaking news uh, this weekend that Brendan Rodgers made a failed attempt to get our captain. And then if it wasn't for the fact that uh, Celtic had just sold Kieran Tierney for 25 million, um, he says that Celtic would not sell Callum at any cost, at any cost. So it just shows you that even the long-term thinking of the, of the football department, they've always known that Callum was going to be a successor to Scott Brown. And he did then go on to sign that long-term deal. And it looks like he will be a one-team man, a bit like our very own James Forrest. Um, so it is all just a bit of speculation just now about our big defender going to Spurs. I hope they don't come in for him. They've got plenty of money. They've gone by somebody that's got more experience of and the Premier League, hopefully they don't come for Carter Vickers. Let's check out the Celtic, any other Celtic news this morning. And not, there's not really a lot about this. There's a lot of speculation about transfers, but I'm not really going to go into them. We're just, we'll wait and see what transpires over the next couple of weeks. I'm sure when once there is more information comes out that's a bit more solid and has a bit of oomph to it, and it, it looks like we'll wait until the transfer window opens before we do anything gets out so anyway rambling on a bit it's a sunday it's a great sunday it's nice and sunny i hope it's nice and sunny where you are let roll up to the party roll up roll up to the party roll up to the party roll up roll up to the